Hey guys, what is going on? So today we are in a parking garage because it has been raining for just days. Uh, the weather has been crap, uh, so we haven't been able to record too many videos, but I wanted to take this time to go ahead and address some questions that I see all the time. And that is, uh, what should you know when buying a 2003 to 2004 Cobra Terminator? As you guys know, I have a 2003 Cobra of my own. Uh, this car currently has 40,000 miles. I bought it with 27,000 miles. It was pretty much stock when I got it besides a pulley and tune. Um, and now it makes over 600 at the wheels. Uh, so I wanted to address some questions and uh, you guys have seen some of the struggles that I've had over the time. So I want to go ahead and address that. So when, first of all, when buying one of these cars, low mileage is very important. However, you don't want a low mileage car that's been sitting forever. You're going to have problems. Um, this car had 27,000 miles when I bought it. And I mean, honestly, when things sit for a long time, you know, the, the stuff doesn't get moved and, you know, stuff starts to break, uh, bushings wear out, stuff like that. Uh, so when I got this car, I actually had to replace uh, both the ball joints and I had to do uh, steering rack bushings because uh, they were making some noise on the front end. So also, uh, low mileage is good, but like I said, there are some things that you need to know um, when buying a low mileage car. You want to make sure it's garage kept, not left outside. Low miles doesn't mean anything if the car has been sitting and neglected. So like I said, I picked this one up. Um, I uh, got a pretty good steal on the car. You know, cash is key. These cars are very hard to get uh, on a loan. I actually was interested in buying an Oxford White 2003 Cobra with about 68,000 miles. And I actually almost bought it. I wanted to buy it on a loan. I had a 2001 Cobra before. So I was gonna buy that on a loan and sell the 2001 Cobra, pay off the loan. And it turns out it's really hard to get these cars on a loan. So I was lucky enough to sell my 2001 Cobra for a good chunk of change, add a little bit of money, and here is my 2003 Cobra. So lesson number one when buying a 2003-2004 Cobra, go with cash, uh, go look at it with cash, and have cash. Because buying these cars with a loan, it's very, very hard. Uh, one, to get a good interest rate, a good term, and three, just finding, getting a good deal on the car. It's very hard to get a good deal on the car when uh, you're buying it from private party, which is the most case in which you're buying these cars. When buying these cars, be sure to check them throughout. Uh, pinch welds typically get uh, pinched on the side if they're jacked up a lot. Um, I mean, that's just any new edge thing. Check for rust, check for rot, you know, all that good stuff. Check the oil, check the coolant. You know, those are important. And uh, a Cobra specific item is check to make sure the inner cooler pump is working. So there's a reservoir for the supercharger fluid or coolant, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that is going to uh, basically cool down the supercharger. Very, very common for the inner cooler pump to go out and the cars will basically be in limp mode because the uh, they'll be getting so hot uh, and that's not the coolant it's the uh, supercharger coolant that's the water that flows through there to cool it down so it'll be getting so hot it's gonna be pulling time and the cars are gonna be slow uh, it could cause a scenario where it could detonate too so if you're buying these cars pulleyed, uh, you want to make sure that the car is running good. Also, when you're buying one, um, you're not going to want to beat on it right away, especially if it's modified. Uh, you don't know what tune is in there. Uh, these tunes are very important. It's very important that the tune pulls the timing out when the cars get hot, uh, especially at high uh, you know, speed runs. Uh, these cars do not like to be heat. So heat plus you know, timing equals detonation. Uh, so you, know, you definitely don't want to be in a scenario where you detonate the car and and break a piston. So number one, I would definitely suggest getting a tune right after you get the car. And these cars are known for quite a few issues. I mean, the car is not perfect. It's a 2003, it's old. Things happen over time, especially when you're making almost double the horsepower from the factory. Uh, like this one right here is making 600 rear wheel horsepower. Uh, these cars made, you know, 390 horsepower at the crank. So it's nearly double what the car made from the factory. <laughs> For those of you who are not familiar, the 0304 Cobras also come with a factory forged engine. These engines are known to handle 600, 700, 800 rear wheel horsepower, usually without a problem. Some people have pushed it to over a thousand. Really depends on your tune, but these cars hold up. So as you guys have seen throughout the time, I've had a few issues with the car. Um, the alternator has gone out. 
uh, which is so incredibly common. Uh, so an important thing to note, always go OEM or a better replacement. Never go with the AutoZone, the Advance. Uh, those rebuilt, uh, really just crappy alternators, they break. Uh, so what I did with mine is I went with a warranted Ford OEM alternator, brand new, um, and I put that in the car. Now there are better uh, alternators uh, that some other companies make, and uh, those are also a very good option. Just do not go with something like AutoZone or Advance. These alternators break. They're put under a lot of load, and uh, you know, it happens they break so the other issue I had was a fuel pump fuse uh, broke uh, that was when I was stuck on the side of the road if you want to see that video it's up here uh, so that is another common issue uh, when you go to the dyno when you're beating on the car uh, full throttle occasionally you can blow a uh, fuel pump fuse especially when you're running a fuel pump booster like I am so I blew the 40 amp fuse luckily all I had to do was put another 40 amp and it's been fine ever since and that's been about two months Another common issue is for these third brake lights to have either condensation or an LED out. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, but I have three LEDs out right here. Um, these things are very expensive, as well as the 0304 Cobra chin spoilers, which are also very expensive. Uh, in my case, my car uh, is missing the factory chin spoiler, and the previous owner replaced it with Mach 1 chin spoiler. Another very common issue with the 2003-2004 Cobra is the fuel rail pressure sensor. The sensor that's on the rail, uh, that tends to go out from time to time. Uh, and it's not a very good scenario when that goes out, because what can happen is that all the fuel is gonna leak down into the cylinders and uh, it could end up uh, getting fuel into the oil, which then prevents uh, lubrication from happening, which could wash out some bearings. So a very good idea to uh, make sure that if you do have the symptoms of a fuel rail pressure sensor going out, meaning the car won't start, something like that, make sure you change the oil afterwards. If you replace the sensor and the car works, I mean, you need to replace the oil because the fuel can get in there and it's not a good scenario. So I also had that issue a little while ago. Luckily, all I did was replace the sensor, change the oil, and we were good to go. Another very important thing is to replace your idlers, whether your pull lead, stock, or bigger blower. Um, as you guys just saw, I just one of my idlers just blew up. Uh, just out of the random, and stock idler with 40,000 miles just blew up. So make sure you replace those before they blow up, especially if you're pulling or bigger blower. Another very common issue is that the throw bearings squeak on these cars. Uh, my car is equipped with a stock clutch, a stock input shaft, and a stock throw bearing, and uh, this thing squeaks a little bit. So be mindful of that, and when you go to upgrade the clutch, you're gonna wanna do an upgraded input shaft, and you're also gonna wanna do a Ford OEM throw bearing with a good clutch, and I mean, it's very common for these throw bearings to squeak, squeal, or whatever, especially when they're not Ford OEM. So I'd also like to address the question of, are these cars reliable daily drivers? Uh, this car is my daily driver. I do drive Turdzilla, the two valve often too. Um, yes, they're reliable daily drivers, but it depends how you drive them. If you're racing them every day, you know, it, stuff's gonna break, it happens. Uh, if you beat on the car, the car doesn't like it, you know? There's stuff that just breaks. I mean, if you take the car to the track, just launch it, dump the clutch at 5,000 RPM, you're gonna break a half shaft. I mean, you have to keep these things in mind. Uh, so as for the Cobra being a reliable daily driver, it can be, it just depends how you drive it. So another important thing to know is the independent rear suspension on the 2003 and 2004 Cobra. It is one of the biggest difference between the standard GT and the Cobra, and that's including 99 to 01 Cobras and the 0304s. So the 99 Cobras uh, and 01 Cobras, their IRS is very similar, however this one's a bit beefed up, um, however you're still going to have some issues with wheel hop, you're still going to have some issues with weak drive shafts, so it's really important to note that the IRS is going to be a limit when you're launching the car, drag racing, stuff like that. However, uh, in my case, I absolutely love the IRS. It handles better in terms of driving quality and it takes corners so well. And you guys know that I have other cars that I can compare it to. Um, it does very, very well. Obviously, it helps to have good rubber on the car. Uh, the only suspension mods I have on this car are Steeda X2 ball joints and H&R Race springs. Uh, so this car is very stock uh, suspension-wise. It just has lowering springs. So specifically talking about the mods on my car, uh, well, as I stated earlier, 
It's a 2003 Cobra. It's red fire, 40,000 miles. Uh, currently has an upgraded TVS 2.3 liter supercharger. Um, it also has the GT500 throttle body, uh, the CNL cold air intake, which really doesn't matter. Um, and it's on a 2.8 pulley, which puts it at 18 to 19 PSI. Um, as you can see here, for the most part, the car's fairly stock. The blower swap is very, very easy. As for fuel system on the car, it is running 56 pound injectors, which are the same injectors the 1314 GT500s come with, and they're actually dual nozzle injectors instead of the typical 60 pound injectors. The car also has a fuel pump booster in the back, uh, and it has the stock 0304 Cobra twin pumps. So this car actually came with a factory parchment interior, which is basically tan insert with a black outside. Um, I did go ahead and trade the seats for 10th anniversary 0304 Cobra seats. We have a MGW short throw shifter, and other than that, I mean, the interior is mostly stock. We have a Pioneer head unit um, to go with the stock Mach 460 sound system. So that's another thing I didn't mention yet. The factory Mach 460 sound system is pretty good, especially if you mostly care about, you know, going fast. It, it does the job, especially with an aftermarket unit that has Bluetooth and USB. Um, it does the job very well. So a common question about wheel setup. Um, my car is on XXR 531s. Uh, they are an 18 by 9 and a half front with a plus 20 millimeter offset and 18 by 11 in the rear with a plus 20 millimeter offset. So these are XXR wheels. You can save your uh, XXR comments for the comment section or whatever. Um, I don't care. I really like these wheels. They're new when I got them so and they don't have any bends so I'm happy with them. So a common question is how wide of a tire can you fit on these cars? Uh, so you can actually fit up to a 345, 30, 18 on these cars. I've seen 335, 35, 18 done very many times. I currently run a 315, 30, 18 Toyo Proxy R888. Uh, that is actually a street tire that hooks very well. As you know, the car makes pretty good amount of power. The car actually hooks up in first gear when the weather is pretty fair. Uh, so these tires I absolutely love. Uh, again, they're a 315 size. I absolutely love a wide wider tire, but they're so functional at this 315 size. I can actually turn around corners and have some fun there, as well as going straight. Something to note though, these tires really, really stink on the drag strip, um, especially at this power level. They wheel hop, they do not like the drag strip, so a bias ply setup is definitely something that's necessary on these cars, especially with more power. <laughs> I also get a common question about the flames. How do you do it? And uh, is it a flamethrower kit or whatever? So the car is equipped with an N2MB watt box. Uh, basically what that is is an ignition two-step and wide open throttle shifting box. Cuts the ignition while wide open throttle shifting. So what does that mean? I keep my right foot on the gas while shifting, hit the clutch, hit the next gear, and what it does is it cuts the ignition in between gear but keeps the fuel going. So when the ignition comes back, sometimes it'll throw a flame. As for, uh, I get questions about the headlights and fog lights. These are Diode Dynamics LED fog lights. They're 6K XLM2. And then the headlights are the Diode Dynamics HIDs. They're a 35 watt palace. They work so well and they are also a 6K temperature. So the cars are a lot of fun, the 2003-2004 Cobras. Um, it's important to note that you can have issues. I mean, some people will have issues with fuel pumps. It's a very good idea to get a wide band on the car so you can always monitor AFR. So another question I get often is when are you gonna run E85 on the Cobra? Uh, so the stock fuel system is not uh, upgraded to handle E85. The lines break down. It just will not work. 
So what I will need for this car is a return style fuel system with some injectors that can withstand E85. So I will be going with ID1000s, most likely I'll be going with the lethal uh, return style fuel system which includes the dual 465 pumps and all the lines to go through. After E85, the car will most likely make somewhere around 700 rear wheel horsepower. It's possible I might do a, a four pound lower and a 3.2 upper, or a 3.0 upper to go ahead and increase the boost slightly um, and prevent some belt slip. And then uh, the E85 allows you to run some more timing so you can make some more power. So I want to talk quickly about the body panels on the car uh, when you buy these cars. So one way to know if the cars are real, uh, you're going to have the uh, 03 or 04 Cobra spoiler unless it was a factory spoiler delete car, which is very, very rare, so keep that in mind. You'll have an 03 or 04 Cobra bumper. The side skirt right here is going to be flush with the car. Um, on other cars, it is not flush except for the bullet. Um, so it's important to remember that's the way it is. The hood should be the Terminator style uh, hood with the heat extractors. Then the front bumper should be the typical 0304 Cobra front bumper. So those are very important uh, body panels that you should see on the car. I did go ahead and upgrade to the 99 to 01 Cobra taillights because they have the amber in the corner. It's a very popular upgrade just for the look. On the interior, you should have 0304 Cobra seats. You should have the dash, the cluster, it should say SVT in the center. The boost gauge should be there. Uh, so it's very important to check for a bunch of these things. This car is also equipped factory with a T56 transmission, which is very, very good. However, you should note that the 10 spline input shaft is very weak, especially with the power level that the car is now. Hence why I have not taken it to the track yet. I have a McLeod Twindus RST and a 26 spline input shaft waiting to go in this car along with a full drag setup. But uh, I need to get that stuff on the car before I can go to the drag strip with this new power uh, because the input shaft tends to break, especially the stock clutch, which I'm still running in this car with 600 rural horsepower. So guys, if you want to know anything more about my Cobra, or if you have questions about buying a Cobra, anything that I did not state in this video, be sure to put them down below in the comment section. I love answering the questions. Uh, if you want to know more about the car, on our website, mustanglifestyle.net, there will be a link in the description. There's always a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, be sure to go ahead and check that, and I have a full list of everything done to my Cobra. Of course, there's so much things that I can talk about in this video, but I think I touched on most of what I was trying to get at so be sure to hit the like button down below leave a comment and if you're new here be sure to hit the subscribe button up there we always have some awesome videos of the cobra the turdzilla which is our project 2 valve mustang and of course the coyotes and every other mustang that we show on this channel so guys we'll see you next time